Welcome back inside the Rowdy Studio, talking NASCAR Hall of Fame with Dustin Long of Landmark Newspapers, also a Hall of Fame voter. And we're talking now maybe about a couple of the, I don't want to say surprises, but maybe the question marks, the last two spots in the Hall of Fame. Well, I think definitely if there is a controversy this year, and I'm not saying there is, but if there is one, it would be Richie Evans, King of the Modifieds, who got voted in. What do you know? Just, just <laughs> get out of here. Just get out of here. I'm with him. I'm with you, Dustin. I mean, Richie Evans... Eight straight championships in the modified division. It's also NASCAR's oldest division. And and that was from, what, 75 to 83 or somewhere in there? 78 to, 80, uh, 78 78 to 85. 85. Gotcha. Because he, you know, he, was, he was killed in a, in a, pra- in a crash in, during practice at Martinsville toward the end of the season, but was so far ahead in the points, still won that championship. Um, he won and, a posthumous championship. Yeah, and he, he won a total <laughs> of nine championships. You know, the big discussion in the room, one of the main discussions in the room was about this is not the Sprint Cup Series Hall of Fame. It says NASCAR Hall of Fame on the door on the building. And I think there was an uh, there was a push to, you know, look outside the Cup Series. Uh, when you did that, you, you know, the main candidates were Richie Evans, nine-time champion, an estimated 475 wins, considered the greatest modified driver in, in, in the sports history. You looked at Jerry Cook, a six-time champion. Uh, you looked at Jack Ingram, uh, you know, a Bush champion. Um, it just seemed that, that, that on the track, Richie's numbers just stood out a little bit more, and right. if if anybody was going to get in outside the Cup Series, this was going to be year for for Richie Evans. Um, he got a, he had a lot of support in the room, uh, made it on fifty percent of the ballot. So certainly, you know, there was there was enough support there to get him in. Um, you know, he. It's part of the sport. I mean, I've had people ask me, it's like, well, why is modified race, how can a modified racer get in? Well, you know, modified racing is one of the, you know, series under the umbrella of NASCAR. Um, You know, I think he was probably, you know, running during maybe the heyday of the modified series. You look at the races and look at the results, there are some pretty big names and names that a lot of people would recognize or last names of people that they would recognize that ran that series. I mean, you know, the Bodines were big. Tommy Baldwin's, you know, dad ran. Uh, you know, Jimmy Spencer was quite a successful modified guy, and, and some others like that. So uh, that was a very strong series. It still is, but I think it was even a stronger series back then. And you know, he was winning, kicking people's butts. You know, the stories was told. Stories were told about you know how some people would try to find out where Richie was going to run and go to another track because they, they just knew they he just was knew win. they just knew he was and the, the thing I was talking about was just here was a guy who just went all out hard charger hard charger went for the win wasn't about points racing he was going to win or break and he won more than he broke it sounds like he's almost the the Richard Petty of the modifieds i mean it's, that's what it's king of the modifieds yeah. i mean that that kind of dominance so, if you're going to recognize another nascar series you're going to pick the richard petty of that series and that's why he's and the question I had asked you guys or, or others is just, if you don't think Richie Evans deserved to be in in the third class, who 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 should have been in that isn't? Who is the name that's missing? Obviously, the first year you could say it was David Pearson. The second year you could say it was Cale Yarbrough and Daryl Waltrip, or one of those. Or Dale Inman. Yeah. Uh, so who's missing this year? Who are the 25? No obvious name this so, year. So, yeah. you know, like I said, I think there was enough enough discussion, momentum. You could start to see it last fall. Uh, there was starting to be more discussion about Richie Evans, so it seemed like it was headed in that direction. So his 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 vote, his his induction, di- I mean, as a selection didn't surprise me. He was on my ballot, uh, and, uh, you know, I think he's a worthy choice. It's interesting, too, that he wasn't even in the slate of nominees for the first class, right? Wasn't he added that second year? Yeah, I believe he, he was. Jerry he, Cook, I think. So, yeah, you know, I, I it think... It just shows you how you can go from not even being nominated to in the Hall of Fame within a couple years. Dale Inman. Yep. So there you go. All right, that's been our look at Richie Evans. One more to go in our discussion of the 2012 NASCAR Hall of Fame class with Dustin Long. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com.